called, uh, for weeks and maybe months. And then one day, I was just sitting AFK in town under guard protection next to an in-game bank. And I went out to get some uh, Krispy Kreme donuts for lunch. That was my usual lunch, like a dozen of those. They were pretty awesome. Uh, I came back and I looked at my character and my name was Manfred. I was like, hmm, this is interesting. So I looked at the chat log and I saw that a GM told me that he can't have me going around killing players as fuckchop. Uh, he's like, you, know, you can kill players or whatever, it's part of the game, but uh, we can't have that name. So he just changed my name to a random name and it happened to be Manfred. And it's stuck ever since. That story took place 20 years ago. Manfred has been playing MMORPGs ever since. It always starts out the same way. He'll play, have fun, learn the game inside and out, and then eventually get bored and start to tinker with it. For fun, I reverse engineer games, and I reverse engineer how the protocol talks to the server, and vice versa, how the, how the server talks back to the client. He hacks online video games. This is what he's good at. And after 20 years of doing this, he's an expert at finding bugs in MMOs. He captures the packets and analyzes what's in them. He'll inject his own data into packets and see how the game responds. He'll find ways into the game client and manipulate what traffic is sent to the server. The exploit he finds in almost every game is an integer overflow. To understand this, imagine you have a clock and the time is 1 o'clock. Now if you were to subtract 1 minute from it, the time would then be 12.59. Do you see how by subtracting it resulted in a larger number? Computers have a limit of how high they can count, and once they hit that limit, it rolls all the way around to the lowest number they can count. And video games don't always check if you can subtract from the lowest amounts. So Manfred tries to subtract from zero, and he sometimes gets surprising results. He's doing this at the packet level, sort of like a man in the middle. When a packet is sent from his computer to the server, he captures it, changes some values, and sends it off. He's been doing this for a long time, so he can pretty much find bugs in any game. So far, he's found bugs in all these games. Ultima Online, Dark Age of Camelot, Anarchy Online, Lineage 2, Final Fantasy Online, the first one, World of Warcraft, Rift Online, Elder Scrolls Online, Lord of the Rings Online, Rift Online, the second, Final Fantasy XIV, Guild Wars 2, and Wildstar Online, and I'm sure I forgot five or six more. Because I personally played a lot of World of Warcraft, let's start there. World of Warcraft was leading the pack as the most popular MMORPG in 2007. Back when I was playing it, I think it had close to 10 million players. Manfred had been playing for a while, and he was having fun leveling up his characters, fighting creatures, and exploring the world. This game had a thing called a talent system. For every level you level up, you get one talent point to put into improving your character. Manfred became curious what packets the computer was sending to the server when he would use a talent point. But there was a problem. The packets between his computer and the server were encrypted, so he couldn't see what was inside them or inject his own data in it. But he's a reverse engineer, so he starts to tinker with... Uh, slightly modifying the game client so I could take over the communication uh, before, decry or before encryption happens when the packets are outgoing, and I take over communication after encryption happens when they're coming from the server. Once he has his hooks in the game communication, he played the game and spent a talent point to boost his character and he saw what the data looks like when this happens. So he tried replaying that same packet back to the game client. What he was expecting to see was that he had spent one talent point, and his talent would go up by one. And I noticed that my skills didn't match up with the talent points I spent. There was like a disconnect. Like, uh, supposedly I had, for example, like 15 skill points in this one skill tree, but I didn't use any of my talent points, which was weird. Uh, somehow, at least initially, I thought it was just a client-side glitch where I raised my uh, talents without using any skill points. So I logged out of the game, closed down the client, and you know I pull up a fresh copy of my character from the server. And that would be that would tell me the true story of what's going on. So I log into the game, and I still have my you know whatever 15 points in my talent tree, and I still have my 15 skill points. So I was like, okay, this is interesting. Let's see what's going on here. Talent points are rare, and you can only get a certain amount. And you can only spend a maximum of five on a specific skill. But Manfred found a way to spend talent points without using talent points, and to spend more than five. I was able to boost it up to 15 points using only five points. 
any exploits that improved your character's strength or gave you an advantage over another player were pretty significant because you know you gain an advantage an unfair advantage over 10 million players basically after manfred overloaded his talents with this exploit he became godlike in the game his powers were far more superior than any other player he started decking out his character and all the best equipment and made himself even more powerful and then i went to see if i could like uh complete a dungeon solo he was able to easily clear dungeons that normally takes five people to complete allowing him to gather even better equipment and improving more. He kept pushing his abilities to see what was possible to do with this super character. At one point, his goal became Molten Core. This was a raid level dungeon, which required 40 people to clear. So he tried to solo it. Uh, my character wasn't powerful enough to like complete Molten Core. So uh, we started getting some friends together. So I buff up my characters and my friends characters and we go in and complete Molten Core, which I think was a 40-person dungeon. Uh, we do it with like eight people. It was a lot of fun. Uh, it was challenging. We used uh, this talent exploit to complete dungeons with very few people for probably eight to nine months. The game developers never detected or caught Manfred doing these exploits. You'd think they'd have metrics on all these dungeons and they could see, you know, how quickly a group of players could finish a dungeon or whatnot, uh, but they didn't. He went back to reverse engineering the client. He found there were debug packets that were enabled in production servers. After spending time analyzing the debug packets, he found ways of doing some amazing things. Things like broadcasting messages to the entire server. I could teleport directly to the player. Even after using these exploits for a few months, he still wasn't caught or detected. So he eventually started getting bored with the game and decided to see how far he can push this before getting banned. So usually the way this ends is in PvP. Uh, people complain when they get, you know, killed instantly. So we started going out into the PvP lands and uh, just basically one-shotting people, you know, killing a person, like a super buffed up level 80 person or level 50, whatever the level cap was back then, you know, in a, in a single hit or a couple of hits. So the players would start playing, they take screenshots, they uh, call GMs, and, you know, uh, fairly quick, quickly, maybe one or two weeks, maybe three weeks afterwards, uh, we'd all get banned. What surprises me most about this story is how a game the size of World of Warcraft can have these exploits in them. The game had 10 million players who were all paying $15 a month to play. The game developers were bringing in over $100 million a month, or $3 million a day. With a budget like that, you'd think they'd have solved every exploit. That, that was a huge oversight on the developer's part. You know, they shouldn't have included development packets in their production MMORPG on the scale of uh, World of Warcraft. So while Manfred was banned from World of Warcraft, it was no problem for him because he could just move on to another game. A few years before that, he played a game called Shadowbane. It was an MMORPG. You level up your character by killing monsters, equip new items, and you fight other players too, but only in certain areas. Manfred was amazed at how buggy this game was. He concluded the game must have skipped any alpha testing, any beta testing, and went directly to final release. In all his 20 years of hacking video games, none have come close to how bad Shadowbane was in terms of bugs. So I think Shadowbane deserves its own category and maybe a movie made after it. Shadowbane was so hopelessly insecure that, you know, if I were to write a game to demonstrate to game developers, you know, do not write a game like this, because this is very insecure, I'd basically give him Shadowbane. The story starts the same way as others. Manfred played the game, got good at it, and then got bored and started reverse engineering the client. He saw that when you get experience points, a packet is sent to the game indicating how many experience points you just earned. He captured that packet, sent it a second time, and sure enough, he got experience points in the game just for resending that packet again. He could keep getting unlimited experience points by just sending specially crafted packets to the server. Within a few minutes, he gained over 100 levels. He found that there was no server-side validation for any packet he sent, so he could do almost anything he wanted. He could open up other players' bank vaults, take items from them. He could load any piece of equipment into his inventory. 
he could even gain massive amounts of strength and hit points. Pretty much anything that I tried, any exploit I tried worked. Um, it was like, is this real life? He tried to see if anyone would be willing to buy equipment, gold, or characters from him for real dollars. But there just wasn't enough demand because there wasn't enough players playing Shadowbane. He decided the game was so buggy and he didn't want to play it anymore. So we just decided to do a grand finale hack and basically unsell the game and move on. <clears throat> I knew if we made this uh, super obvious that the servers would get rolled back. So we had we did have to kind of go over the top because I mean if we killed a few players here and there and blah blah blah, uh, you know they'd complain to developers on the forums and they get ignored. But if we do like a mass scale uh, game mechanic changing attack where it kills hundreds of players and totally alters the rules of the game, then they get rolled back. Uh, so one of our grand finale acts was to basically teleport high-level monsters into safe haven cities that new players would start in. So like, let's say you create a new character in Shadow Bay and you're sent into this little island where the game teaches you how to play. It's supposed to be completely safe. But we teleported like level 200 monsters in there to kill anybody that joined the game. So you join the game as a new player and then suddenly this like level 200 dragon just totally decimates you. So on this little, little island of new players, uh, you know, we probably killed Dozens and dozens and dozens of new players joining the game and respawning over like a course of 30 minutes to an hour. We teleported an entire town full of people like under the ocean. So they'd slowly drown. Uh, you know, they weren't drowning fast enough, so we also teleported the monsters with them so that the monsters would kill the drowning players. So, you know, we're killing newbies joining in the game, we're killing active players, we're teleporting players into the ocean. It's just complete chaos. It was, it was, yeah, it was pretty funny. I mean, it was all good fun, and I was kind of shocked and awe. It was, it was funny that, you know, that the events that were going on, you know, players being teleported under the sea, monsters being teleported into newbie areas where players are supposed to be safe. It was shocking that, you know, how is it possible that we could pull this off in a supposedly final game? But still, that wasn't enough. He decided to make every safe zone in the game a PvP zone. This means the players could attack other players anywhere in the world. There was no place to hide. Manfred had used his exploits to level his character high up and gave his character all the best equipment in the game. So now that the whole world is a PvP area, you can guess what he did next. Uh, me and my friends just going in and decimating everybody with highly overpowered characters. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was complete chaos and disorder. All good fun. Manfred's chaos impacted everyone on the entire server. There were hundreds of tombstones everywhere you looked. And everyone was wondering what in the world is happening. Some people are saying the gods went crazy, and other people are saying there's bugs in the game. After about an hour of total chaos, the servers went offline. Him and his friends were banned from the game, and the server rolled back to a save point before the chaos began, and all players were restored. Initially, the Shadowbane people thought, you know, somebody rooted their servers, you know, gained illegal access to their servers, and they thought their servers were compromised when all we were doing was just uh, using in-game mechanics. And I look at the aftermath in the Shadowbane forums, and some of the players were saying, like, um, this should happen more often. This was, like, the most fun they've ever had since they bought the game. <laughs> so, I mean, there were some players that were kind of annoyed, and some players were like, hey, this is pretty cool. Let's do it again. This Shadowbane hack was so ridiculous that Wired wrote an article about it back in 2003 when it happened. Nobody ever knew who was behind this, until now. Wired posted a comment from the game developers, which said, quote, We're working with law enforcement, and we promise all of you that these individuals will be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. End quote. Um, that was all bark. Uh, I think they realized that their servers weren't compromised, and we were just using uh, the game protocol and the game logic against itself by you know, finding unintended features in the protocol. 
Manfred was never contacted by game developers or law enforcement for this event. Manfred has tried working with game developers to responsibly disclose the bugs he finds. Back in the early days when I started doing this, I tried to work with the game developers, and it's always backfired. Uh, for one example would be Anarchy Online. I think it came out in 2000 or 2001. So um, I page GM in game and I go, hey, I want to talk to one of your developers about some exploits I found. So we go in, we talk in IRC, you know, we kind of go out of band outside the game and talk over IRC and we're like, Here, here's these exploits and here's how we produce them and here's how to do them. And they're like, okay, cool, thanks. Next day we wake up and our accounts are banned. This happened twice uh, early on, and you know, if it happens twice, or it ha- if it happens in one game and then it happens in another game with a completely different development team, then you gotta assume, you know, maybe the game industry doesn't want to work with people responsibly disclosing hacks. I think their main point is they don't want people reverse engineering their client in the first place. So maybe I think that's their motive for uh, banning people that find these sorts of things. Well, it's kind of counterintuitive because you don't want to ban the people that are trying to help you out. You'd think they'd want to give us resources or additional resources or be like, hey, here's some free accounts and here's, you know, here's our private test servers. Have at. Um, you know, the opposite happened. They just said, we're going to ban you. Uh, don't come back. This year, Manfred gave a talk at DEF CON. He was going to expose two unfixed bugs in Elder Scrolls Online and Wildstar Online. He decided not to demonstrate the hack. After the talk, one of the companies uh, that was behind Elder Scrolls Online came up to me and they were like, here's my business card, let's talk. So I talked to them, I I showed them the exploit uh, shortly after DEF CON. Um, While we were still in Vegas, I showed it to them in person and they were like, cool, thanks. Uh, The other one for Wildstar Online, uh, I sent him an email describing uh, the issue at hand and its ramifications and they got back to me and said cool thanks and that's about it for elder scrolls online uh i last checked about a month and a half ago which was about six weeks after defcon and disclosure and it still hasn't been fixed um wild star online i haven't checked since But this is just chapter one of Manfred's epic journey. All of these exploits you've heard are just for fun. But he found exploits in other games that would change his life for decades. He found ways to turn his virtual items into real U.S. dollars. No longer was this about fun and games. It became a serious full-time business. Let me just say that given the option of getting a day job uh, as a software engineer, and you can imagine how much uh, a software engineer makes these days, given the option of doing that versus hacking online video games. I chose to hack online video games uh, because the pay was good, but also because I was running my own business and, you know, making my own hours. Join us in part two of this story as we shift from putting coins into the game to taking coins out of the game. You've been listening to Darknet Diaries. There's a bunch of screenshots of Manfred's adventures at darknetdiaries.com. Be sure to check them out, as well as links to some of the stories that were mentioned. Music is provided by Ian Alex Mack, Kevin McLeod, and Tabletop Audio. A5, B1, B2, B3, B4, B5, C5. Let's play a game. It's your move.